They used to joke that they barely made the world map, but today all eyes were on New Zealand. From inside churches and mosques, people across the globe have paid their respects to the victims of the Christchurch terror attack. Donald Trump was among them. A sense of shock and outrage around the world. And inside mosques all over the Muslim world, prayers for the victims of the New Zealand massacre. In Turkey, they described it as the latest example of racism and Islamophobia. In London, at the New Zealand High Commission, flowers were laid, followed by a vigil by members of the Muslim community. Those who seek to divide us will not win. The Queen and Prince Philip sent their condolences to those who lost loved ones, saying they also pay tribute to the emergency services and volunteers who are providing support to the injured. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex adding, We have all been fortunate to spend time in Christchurch and have felt the warmth, open-hearted and generous spirit that is core to its remarkable people. In Norway, Prime Minister Erna Solberg said the attack brought back memories of 2011 when anti-Muslim Anders Breivik massacred 77 people. New Zealand has Norway's support, she says. The Eiffel Tower turning its lights out early in tribute to the victims, while police in New York stepped up security at mosques and schools as a precaution. Mosques and masjids will be a special focus today um, and for the next few days till we understand uh, the breadth of the details of the attack. In his manifesto, the government called Donald Trump a symbol of renewed white identity and common purpose, but was critical of the president's leadership, saying instead he was most influenced by conservative commentator Candace Owens. Ms Owens responded on Twitter today, calling the attack a tragedy, saying any insinuation that black conservatism in the United States has somehow inspired radical Islamophobic white supremacy terror overseas is pointedly absurd. Inside the White House, President Trump was asked if he thought white nationalism is a rising threat. I don't really. I think it's a uh, small group of people that have very, very serious problems. In an earlier call, New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern told President Trump the best way he could support New Zealand was to show sympathy and love for all Muslim communities. In Washington, D.C., Charles Crouch, NBN News. Political solidarity over the New Zealand attack has been shattered by a controversial Senator Fraser Anning, who's lashed out at a young protester. The violent response from the independent politician and his supporters came after he'd been condemned for blaming the Christchurch victims for the massacre. An egg to the head earns a slap and a punch to the face. It's a 17-year-old boy against a 69-year-old Queensland senator. The teen is grabbed in a headlock by a member of the crowd and crash-tackled to the ground before being arrested and later released without charge. The violence broke out at an event in Melbourne where protesters gathered to confront Fraser Anning. The controversial senator sparked global anger after linking the New Zealand terror attacks to Muslim immigration blaming the victims for the deadly violence. I want to absolutely and completely denounce the statements made by Senator Annie. These comments are appalling and they're ugly. It is uh, disgusting, it's disgraceful, it has no place in the Australian Parliament. But here he is, delivering a message which seeks to divide, which seeks to stoke the flames of hatred. The angry clash overshadowing what was meant to be a day of peace. Earlier, Scott Morrison stood shoulder to shoulder with Muslim leaders in Sydney. The Christian Prime Minister attending a mosque where everybody prayed as one. An attack against one is an attack against all of us. In Melbourne, Bill Shorten also met with members of the Islamic community. I just say to Muslim Australians, you're as Australian as everyone else. You deserve the same respect as every other Australian. And leaders past and present paid their respects. I just wanted to join everybody in expressing my profound sorrow for the people of New Zealand. In a show of respect at Parliament House, the flag is flying at half-mast. And throughout the nation's capital, there are signs of sadness and friendship. At open day at Government House, two flags flying low, but side by side. I'm like all Australians, absolutely devastated. And outside the New Zealand High Commission, little flickers of peace. 
long way from the ugly punches on a day of mourning. Fiona Willen, NBN News. An inmate has been shot dead after assaulting officers outside Lismore Base Hospital on the New South Wales far north coast. It's understood the man was trying to escape police custody. A sea of red and blue on Uralba Street as detectives scoured the scene of an overnight shooting. There they uh, found a man had been uh, critically uh, injured uh, whilst allegedly uh, attempting to escape by the custody of corrective services officers. A 43-year-old man was fired upon at around 7.30. He allegedly assaulted an officer while he was being led from the hospital. He was rushed back inside for treatment and he later died. In a statement, New South Wales Corrective Services said it believes a warning shot was fired before the second and fatal blow. These are now aspects of the investigation. Um, uh, we have set up a crime scene. Uh, we forensically examined. Um, part of the determination of the investigation is how many shots for it uh, and uh, from what um, firearm, etc, etc. Police Rescue and SES canvassed the street again today for evidence to assist with the investigation. Thankfully, no staff or patients were injured. Counselling and support have been offered to those inside the hospital at the time of the shooting. They are a little bit shocked and shaken uh, about what happened, and that is understandable. If the struggle had occurred inside the hospital, who knows what could have happened. Let's not forget, this is the third shooting in three years in a hospital. A brief is now being prepared for the coroner. There was uh, quite a number of uh, witnesses from our, from what we can uh, we can tell, and we're asking anyone that may have seen anything to contact us uh, to assist us with this inquiry. Samantha Poach, NBN News. Coming up, the moment lightning strikes the camping ground in Queensland. Big 
savings, the big computer sale at Harvey Norman. Laptop from $298, desktop from $498, and all-in-ones from $798. Save big in the big computer sale at Harvey Norman, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday only. Go! Get to Godfrey's for up to 70% off. Woo! Rufus stick backs, hard drives, and wipers. Only best known for slashing prices, but there are growing fears Big W may soon be slashing hundreds of jobs. Retail analysts predict plunging profits could force the shutters down at one third of the discount department's chain stores nationwide. Since the mid-60s, it's been the chain best known for offering big name brands at the lowest prices. That's our promise to you from Big W. With around 22,000 employed across the country, retail analysts are now concerned Big W could stand for big worries. It's probably not if, but when uh, they'll close. Macquarie Wealth predicting 60 of the discount department store's 183 outlets could be closed to help make big savings. Last financial year, the retailer posted a loss of $110 million. In order to stay afloat in the modern market, analysts agree it's time to check out change. A Kmart is, is trendy and cheap. What, what's Big W going to stand for? How can they differentiate themselves in the market from the others? I think it's inevitable there will be job losses. Consolidating stores and moving your emphasis to improving your online makes complete sense. And that's really where the future is. Just last month, the Woolworths Group, the owner of Big W, announced a national review into the brand. But despite these latest analyst predictions about job cuts and store closures, Woolies says no decision has been made. You can either be proactive or reactive. I think in the case of Woolies, they're trying to take a more proactive stance as opposed to being forced to do it in four to five years' time when they are unprofitable. A group of campers was left shaken when lightning struck a tree near their tents. The travellers were attending a country music festival in Ipswich in Queensland's southeast when the storm rolled in. The region was hit by damaging winds, heavy rainfall and large hailstones, bringing air, bus and train travel to a standstill. A single mother has filed a $705 billion lawsuit against actors Felicity Huffman and Laurie Loughlin, as well as a host of other rich parents. The Californian woman claims 33 parents charged with bribing and cheating to get their own children into elite universities denied her son a fair go when applying to colleges. 